So did you guys happen to see out on YouTube the, the engine oil additive video put out by the Motor Oil Geek? Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with his channel, I will put a card up in the corner to that specific video that I'm talking about and a link in the description to his channel and the video. Um, I'll be honest, he did an excellent job with that video as far as compiling data and taking a just a broad look at all the major engine oil additive products out on the market and tried to see, okay, are these actually snake oil or not? I don't wanna spoil that video for you guys, but the reason that I'm making this video is frankly, he beat me to the punch. Um, I was actually in process of shooting a engine oil additive video when his video released. So I can only test one engine oil additive at a time. I don't have a fleet of vehicles that I can pour all these different additives in and take samples from to see how they perform. So I have to be very, very strategic with the engine oil additive that I chose. And the engine oil additive that I chose for this test was the engine oil additive that made the absolute bold face, boldest claims out on the market. That is going to be Hot Shot Secret FR3. If you take a look at the packaging of Hot Shot Secret FR3, like I said, there's all sorts of claims on here. First of which, they claim a horsepower increase of up to 5%. They also claim a fuel economy increase of up to 5%. They also claim it reduces engine wear by up to 43%. Those three things that I just named are also backed up by third-party ASTM testing per their label. I don't know if any of that stuff is true or not, but that's just what their label says. The other things that they claim on the label is it reduces the engine oil operating temperature. Finally, they also claim it restores loss compression and it reduces valve and lifter noise. So I wanted to be able to test this specific additive to see does it actually live up to the claims that they put on the bottle. Now, in order for me to do this, what I did is inside my truck, I have a Banks iDash data logger. So this data logger that I have plugged into my OBD2 port takes 100 different sensor readings and samples them 10 times a second. I have all of the data for this truck for 12,000 miles. I have one data set without the additive. I have another data set with the Hot Shot Secret FR3 in the crankcase. So now I can see, are the claims on the bottle full of crap or not? In addition to that, I also sent out my engine oil without the additive and with the additive to Blackstone. So I have a direct AB comparison for with the additive versus without. In addition to that, in my data logs, I have a weather station from Banks installed in this truck called the Air Mouse. The Air Mouse reads all of the ambient conditions and I have those data logged as well. So now I know exactly what the ambient conditions are in both data logs with and without the additive. So I know that I'm making a direct apples to apples comparison as far as the weather conditions are concerned. Now, as far as the oil that I tested the FR3 with, I used Pennzoil Platinum Euro L 5W30 full synthetic. That is what is specified for this 2.8 liter Duramax in my truck. Um, GM recommends a Dexos 2 oil. That is what I put in the oil and that is what I mixed with the FR3 and this is also my control oil without the additive. So the oil sample that was sent out to Blackstone was the sample before I put the additive in and then obviously I sent another sample after the additive was installed in the crankcase. So there's absolutely no way that the FR3 is in my control sample. So with all that in mind, taking a look at some of the claims on the bottle and looking at my data logs, guys, I combed over these data logs for literally days. Um, just to give you an idea, like I said, I have 12,000 miles worth of data logs sampling a hundred different sensors 10 times a second. So the amount of data that I have on this oil and on this additive is frankly ridiculous. Um, in addition to that, because this is a emissions equipped diesel truck, I also have 
all of the emissions data that goes along with this additive. Um, guys, after combing over the data, before and after, and I've looked at it upside down, sideways, every way you can spin it, there's absolutely no benefit to putting this product in your crankcase. None. Um, I have the data logs to back up what I say. Um, in addition to that, I also have the Blackstone oil sample information. So let me pull that up on the screen now. So this is the oil analysis data that I got back from Blackstone after doing this back-to-back -back test. Um, if you look up at the top, they have some comments up there. You guys can, you know, pause out the video and just read the comments and, you know, analyze this however you want to. Um, as far as the two tests that you see, there's two tests that you see here on the screen. The one kind of on the right is the control sample. The one a little bit further to the left is going to be the sample with the hotshot secret additive. If you look up at the top, there is a slight mileage difference in the oil. So the control sample was ran for 5,963 miles, whereas the sample with the hotshot secret additive was ran for 6,128 miles. So that when you start really looking at the wear metals, that sort of answers the question as to why some of the wear metals on the hotshot secret side may be slightly higher than the control side because the hotshot secret additive was ran slightly longer than the control sample. So as you're looking at this guys, aluminum, chromium, iron, and copper are gonna be kind of the major uh, wear metals that you're gonna see. And my iron wear, as they set up in the comments, is pretty high. Um, the aluminum, again, is also slightly high. It may just be a simple fact that I'm very, running a very, um, let's call it DPF safe uh, engine oil versus some of the other stuff that's out on the market. So I may play around with experimenting with some other oils in this engine just to see if I can get these wear metals a little bit lower. But generally speaking here, guys, looking at the two samples that I'm showing you on the screen back to back, um, if you guys see any major differences here, I'm all ears because Hotshot Secret is claiming a 43% reduction in wear. If I had a 43% reduction in wear, why isn't it reflected in the wear metals in the end, the drained engine oil that I sent to Blackstone? So as you guys just saw, the data that I have largely backs up what the motor oil geek came up with in his video. This stuff is frankly snake oil. Um, in addition to that, if you start really diving into some of the marketing material that goes along with the Hot Shot Secret FR3, um, there's a lot of inconsistencies on the Hot Shot Secret website when you start looking at their quote unquote case studies. So let's look at that a minute. All right, so this is Hot Shot Secrets website, and I pulled up the FR3 friction reducer product listing. And if you scroll down here a little bit, they make some interesting claims. So first of all, FR3 reducer will improve vehicles oil by improving its shear and oxidation stability, film strength, and especially friction reduction. This means your oil will stay in specification longer. Remember that statement right there. Stay cleaner and protect your engine better, allowing it to last longer. So if you scroll down here and you go to resources and you click the resources tab, come down here and you hit select this um, dynamometer test with this 6-7 Cummins. It comes up with a case study of the FR3 additive in two different Dodge pickup trucks with the 6.7 Cummins. So I'm not gonna read you all of this, but there's some interesting things that you see down at the bottom of the page. Um, they go through the horsepower. They also checked um, them versus competitors. You know, they obviously don't name the competitor. They just say competitor X. Um, but down here at the bottom, what we don't know about these results. So further testing will need to be completed to answer the following questions. How long will the results be seen for either product? So you don't know how long your product lasts, but you're claiming over here on this page that it, your oil is gonna stay in specification longer. So 
how can it stay in specification longer on this page? And then on this page, you don't know how long it's going to last, right? It, I, I just don't see how it can work both ways. But hey, I'm not hotshot secret. Um, does the power continue to increase after running the engine for a long period of time or power will power plateau or decrease? Meaning if you are climbing a long grade for an extended period of time, they don't know what the horsepower is going to do. They don't know what the additive is going to do um, based on this statement. They don't even know if you can recreate these results with another vehicle brand or dynamometer, but they're claiming these gains that they're showing here, they're, that's what they're claiming on the front of the bottle. But they don't know if you can actually um, replicate what they're doing here. They also don't know, ha has it actually affected fuel economy? Again, they're claiming it on the front of the bottle, so I don't know how they don't know if it's affecting fuel economy. They don't know if the emissions were affected. Well, if you would have bought a $400 iDash and data log this thing when you were doing the wide open throttle pulls, you would have had the emissions data provided these are emissions equipped trucks. Um, they don't know how long the product needs to be in the engine for it to achieve peak performance. They don't know how these results compare to using a gasoline engine. And they also don't know how the competitor's additive would have fared in this test had it been used in the exact same truck. These are two different trucks, I think on the same dynamometer with two different additives in them. And finally, they also don't know would results be comparable to this evaluation if both trucks were the same model year. So they're using two different trucks to make two different comparisons here. And they're using all of this data, you know, this fake data that they came up with. This is what they're putting on the front of the bottle. And like I said, I found this on their website right here. So with everything I just got done telling you in mind, let's just take a step back here a second and do a little bit of critical thinking because I don't think people do enough critical thinking anymore. If you stop and actually think about the R&D department at Pennzoil versus the R&D department at name your engine oil additive company, I'd be willing to bet the R&D department at Pennzoil has probably already played with the additives that are in this product. There is no way a smaller company like this can engineer something to an R&D level like a company like Pennzoil, Mobile One, Valvoline, Amsoil, pick your motor oil brand. There is no way a company like this size has an R&D budget like a company this size. That's all I'm really saying here, guys. So if these additives work and these additives actually do something to the motor oil, they'd already be in the Pennzoil. That's what I'm saying here. Um, for any of you engine oil additive companies that are watching this video, my challenge to you guys is pretty simple. Um, like Hotshot Secret specifically, they call out you know, a horsepower increase of up to 5%, a fuel economy increase of up to 5%. Okay, well, NASCAR teams would kill for 5%. So if your engine oil additive does what you say it would do, why aren't you guys sponsoring a NASCAR team? Or at least being, you know, a sort of like a supplemental sponsor or not necessarily a title sponsor on a NASCAR car. But if your engine oil additive works, guys in NASCAR would kill for 5%. So if this stuff works, why isn't it in every single NASCAR car that's out there running every Sunday? That's all I'm saying. So that's pretty much what I have for this video, guys. Um, if this stuff actually worked, I would love to see some data from somebody other than Hotshot Secret that says the FR3 additive actually does something because I found no game with it. The motor oil geek, who obviously has a motor oil background, much more so than what I do, found no gain with it. Him and I are on the same page as far as the performance of this product. Um, if you guys have any additional information, I'm all ears. But as far as the performance in this vehicle, with this particular motor oil, in my particular driving scenario, there was absolutely zero gain using the FR3 additive. 
Um, you're better off just taking the money you would have spent on additives and just doing additional oil changes. You'd be better off in the long run. Um, guys, I will have links down in the description to the Hotshot Secret FR3, um, the Pennzoil Euro L, in addition to some other motor oils if you guys want to check any of that stuff out. Um, as always, guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. I will also have a link down below to the Motor, motor Oil Geeks channel and the video that he shot on engine oil additives. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.